Hi, this is Andy. Um, today is a, uh, a rainy and windy day in Austria, so I will take the chance to give you a closer look into the FPV race tracker software. So I will show you first how to mount the transponder unit uh, to the quad and explain you a bit about the transponder, what you have to take care about it. Let's go to the lab and I will show you what I spoke about. So, back in the lab, um, first of all I will explain you a bit uh, how you have to mount the transponder as I spoke before. So make sure uh, to mount the transponder on the side instead of the button uh, uh <coughs> in the direction on the right side of the quad. If this is the front side and this is the back side, mount it on the right side of the quad uh, like that one, like I did. Good thing, as I mentioned as well before, is uh, you just can plug in the 5 volt uh, uh, on your remote control uh, receiver or on the NACE. Uh, so 5 volt is enough, which is good and easy to handle for everybody. Another thing is what you have to take care about it is uh, uh, the transponders. So there's a new version out, as you can see easily. This is the new one with the big infrared lens and this is the small one. The small one will not work uh, uh, as good as the big one. So please make sure if you are going to order that, uh, take the big one. <coughs> another thing is, another reason why we have mounted right now on the right side uh, uh, on the cord is that we are using uh, the receiver unit vertical, vertical to the ground. Uh, this helps a lot uh, if the cord is crossing the start finish line uh, in different angles. So I have very, very good experience with that and I'm 100% convinced about that solution. So the next thing, uh, uh, what I'm going to show you is the software solution itself, all the features I have already added to the solution. Uh, I'm trying to explain how you can set up uh, and assign pilots, how you can set up a race track. Uh, a race event and all this stuff. <coughs> I'm continuously developing uh, uh, new features for the software. I have a lot, of a lot of things in my mind and I get a lot of feedback uh, uh, what is necessary. So continuously I will improve and add new features to it. For now I will show you uh, what is already existing uh, and um, as well I want to tell you the software is running because a lot of questions came up. Uh, the software is running on every uh, operating system, so it doesn't matter if you use a Mac, a Windows or a Linux PC, uh, you can run it online and offline. Uh, um, this is important to tell you. So let me give you a closer look to the software. I'm happy to get feedback, uh, so just drop me a line if you have questions, but I hope this will cover right now a lot of questions. Okay, let's go. So let me give you a closer look to the FPV race tracker application uh, with all the features uh, which I'm going to launch end of July and, and uh, beginning of, of August. So the FPV race tracker will be available at the, at the Chrome web store. Uh, uh, and additional to that I will launch a website where you can download it as well. Uh, as soon as you have uh, downloaded and installed the application uh, uh, it will appear on your app site at Google Chrome uh, and easily you can click on the icon and open the application. Let me let me make it a bit bigger, a better overview like that one. Uh, please note as well the application runs on every operating system. Doesn't matter if you have a Mac, uh, Windows or Linux system and it works offline and uh, online. To <coughs> the first thing <coughs> you have to do is you need to plug in your <coughs> receiver receiver unit via USB. Uh, the receiver unit is uh, uh, the receiver unit is powered up uh, via the USB. So this is nice and comfortable. So as soon as you have plugged in, uh, your USB device will uh, appear here, and you just have click on it, mark it, to make sure the hardware and the software is connected. The next thing is uh, like the pilot database. So this is a completely 
database of all pilots who was already racing and, uh, uh, and you can create new pilots, type in new pilots for the upcoming race. So I did some examples already but let me show you how you can create a pilot. Well, uh, type in a new pilot, just click on create, type in uh, a name like first name, last name, alias you know like whatever whatever you like goofy phone number the phone number is nice because you can send uh, the pilots sms manage, uh, messages if you want during the event as well the email address for example this makes sense because you can send out emails to the pilots uh, for the next upcoming event for example so the club you know, a team from the pilot. The transponder ID is uh, very important because uh, this is the unique identification of the quad of the pilot who is crossing a start finish line. You can do that in, in two different ways. Either you can type in the number which is written on the transponder uh, or you can scan it. Uh, to scan uh, the transponder ID, first you have to save the pilot. Uh, click again and then you have this button over there which says scan transponders. If you click this button you have 10 seconds time to swipe the transponder over the start finish line and automatically the system is recognizing uh, the transponder ID. Uh, very important click save all the time. Uh, so now we have created Hans Meyer uh, as a new pilot uh, like that and uh, you will be always available as well to download all the pilots you have in your database. Uh, the next thing is you need to create an event. So therefore you need to click on the, on the event button. Uh, uh, let, us, let us create the event together. So uh, let us call the event uh, Black Moon FPV Race. So then click create. Uh, once you have done that, uh, you will find this event on this list. Uh, all the pilots you have in your database appear here on this side. And you just need to assign the pilots to the race. You can do that by clicking on them. So let's take out four pilots out of it uh, uh, and mark them. Just a note as well, you can filter as well. You can, you know, search either for pilot uh, numbers, for example, or you can search for the first name, for example, and stuff like that. This helps to find pilots uh, uh, as well. So as soon as you have uh, assigned pilots to a race you have created, you can switch to the race button. Uh, at, the, at the race button, first of all, choose the event you have created, the Black Moon FPV race, for example, and all the pilots automatically will appear on the right side you have assigned to the race. This is the first step. The next step is you need to choose if it's a time or is it a round race, like laps or time. Time means you can say, okay, uh, uh, one heat is 330 seconds or whatever you want. And the first who, who finished this race during the, this time with the most of laps and fastest laps who wins. This is one thing you have to choose, but let us go with the laps because the laps is, I think, quite popular. If you choose laps, the type laps, you can define how many laps one heat, one race uh, uh, should be. Default is five laps, but you can do eight or whatever you want. Uh, um, so as soon as the first pilot is crossing uh, the start finish line after five laps, the race is over then. And then we have different race formats, like uh, you need to choose is this a training, is it a qualifying, or is it a competition race? Let's stay at the, uh, the qualifying, for example. All races are up to round and heats, so uh, you can choose which round 
which qualifying round you are racing. So it could happen that you have more qualifying rounds uh, uh, in a race, like one, two or three or whatever. Uh, and then you have to tell the system which heat you are racing right now at the round number one. At the moment, uh, popular is four pilots or one race at one heat, uh, but uh, the race band gives us the possibility to race with like six or eight pilots at the same time as well. Uh, this is what you have to define over there. And the description means like is for you can type in whatever you want, but I, I'm using that for the class like class. 250 or like class 330 limited whatever you want to type in you can do that over there as soon as you have did all these, these decisions you need to tell the system who is racing in round one and heat one so by choosing uh, the pilots let me choose three pilots for example in heat one you just need to click them and um, after you did all these decisions let me type in the class as well so just class 250 so these pilots are racing in in round one heat one at the qualifying uh, five laps <clears throat> and you need to mark them you need to show you need to assign them to this heat as well by clicking them so you can unclick as well uh, like this one and then let the start rates by clicking that. So we have a countdown of five seconds at the moment. And then the race starts like that. Uh, uh, so the, the screen changed. But this is the live screen over there. So you will see first time uh, the pilot is crossing the start finish line or each pilot is crossing. You will see uh, uh, the rank, the pilot name, the laps, total time, average time, past time, and last time. So by zero, everything is on zero, and the second time he's crossing the start-finish line, you will see first lap, total time, average time, best time, last time, and so on, until five laps are done already. Uh, uh, the ranking is always first, second, <coughs> third, and so on. <coughs> so the best one is always on the top over there. You can download this result after the race straight away. Let me finish this race and close this race uh, uh, and let me go over after the race is done or the round is done and the heat is done you can go further you know with the second heat or like the third heat and so on and if the qualifying or training or whatever competition is done you can go with the second round you know really depending on you which race format you are racing so I have I've tried to keep it quite open at this version as well. What I'm going to do is for the next uh, next version is I will uh, put a new feature in which says predefined um, uh, race format. Therefore, it's not necessary to choose always the round and heats and stuff like this. The, the pilots who are assigned to this race are automatically will be assigned to heats and, and, and rounds and you don't have to choose them by themselves as well with the race band. This is a nice feature. Automatically pilots will assign to a race band and so on. This is one package I will, I will put in. Another package nice feature is that I will, uh, you will have the possibility to have a second TV screen plugged into your PC where you can show the live results and as well the, the pilot race schedule so everybody will know who is the next to race. This makes it um, you know, very easy for the race director and for the pilots to see uh, who is the next in which round and which heat, for example. Uh, another feature will be I will implement a centralized server as well, so the people will be able to, to register to a race online and so on. So I've got a lot of stuff in my mind and got a lot of feedback uh, uh, from, the, from the pilots out there as well. So after the race is ready, uh, you can have a look to the statistics as well. So if I choose a race, what I did already, let me have a look. Was it test 11 and not training or that? Uh, uh, you will have always available all data from each race uh, you have done or you are doing. For example, 
like that was me I did like uh, uh, five laps with the total time average time best best time and last time you can have the total overview or like for each laps as well and for each pilots uh, if you want uh, what I will change is I have a total time of 93 seconds I will change that in, in, in the upcoming version as well to minutes second and milliseconds that makes it easier to, to, to understand what that means uh, as well you can download that one for the people and send it out or put it on, on, on somewhere else and if you don't need it you can delete it please keep in mind uh, all data are stored locally on your PC so uh, you can leave it there it will be not lost somehow uh, yeah that, that are the, the main the main features so far so as I mentioned before I will put a lot of new features in and I'm, I'm, I hope I get a, a lot of feedback so every feedback is welcome from you guys and uh, yeah I think this is a, a the next milestone uh, to, to run professional professional race events with this kind of system I hope you have enjoyed it I will I will come up with another video explaining more in detail how you can handle the system I'm trying to keep it very very simple uh, uh, and save time for the race pilots and especially for the event coordinators this is uh, the aim and, and my main target to that. Thank you very much. So I hope I could give you a good overview about the FPV Race Tracker uh, software application uh, in this video. So I just want to show you uh, uh, again where you can find the, the transponder IT number. So the trans transponder IT number is always over there on each transponder. Uh, <coughs> as I mentioned in my video, I will, I will put a lot of new features and I will release another f a lot of new versions as well uh, uh, and keep going, keep uh, try to sail hard to the wind because I believe this makes our, our sport more professional, to have a, a reliable um, timing system available. <coughs> so, uh, so every feedback is welcome, just drop me a line and uh, thank you very much for watching.